uh, that I'd like to have answered. Now that's a good response. So do your homework and know something about the, um, the company that you're interviewing with. And you know what, it's not a bad uh, idea to Google your interviewer as well. You may be able to find a profile on LinkedIn, and you may be able to find out what their, their hobbies are, their passions are, so that you can connect with them on a more personal level. So do your homework before the interview, for sure. Uh, tie your resume to your accomplishments and the stories that you'd like to tell in the interview. So be sure that your resume captures those great stories about you that you would like to share. Because that way, even inexperienced interviewers will say, gosh, this is sort of interesting. I see here that you were able to reduce your month in close from a week to just a day. Gosh, tell me how you did that. That opens the door then for you to tell your great story. So be sure your excellent stories, the best stories about you, are reflected in your resume so that it allows you the opportunity to expand on that and share that story in the interview process. Um, some other things that I'd like to touch on. Um, dress for success in the interview. Here's some general tips and guidelines, and, and many of you have heard these, I'm sure, before. But one of the best tips I can give you is ask the person who schedules the interview with you uh, to say, what is the appropriate dress code? What is your suggestion for how I would dress? And take the clue from that person, because generally they want you to be successful. So take your clue from that individual and get uh, the answer straight out. If you're not sure, if you don't have that opportunity, if it was scheduled uh, via email perhaps, then you don't have that opportunity. I would suggest dressing for that level that for which you're interviewing or one step above is sort of the rule of thumb. But you know, use your head and um, be smart about that. Do a little bit of homework again to find out what people wear to work, what kinds of uh, clothing, dress code they have there. If it's very casual, you don't want to be coming in a very, very formal attire. So be appropriate. If you have to err, err on the side of conservative dress. And what this means is unless you're going for a job as um, a lifeguard, you don't want to wear flip-flops and shorts, okay? Uh, you don't want to look like you're dressed for a day at the beach. What I would suggest is you have for most, uh, for most business situations, uh, business attire, perhaps visual, uh, business casual, if you've gotten that uh, heads up from the uh, person who scheduled the interview with you. I would say no excessive jewelry, no excessive makeup, um, no jeans unless it's been specified, um, no dirty clothing, certainly. And the only exception to that, one time I did interview an individual for a very professional, high-level job, and he was wearing uh, jeans. But he had told me before, he said, Kathy, I'm going to be coming from a job site. I'm going to be wearing jeans for this work site. It's, it's, it's going to be in a dirty work environment. There's some inventory stuff that we're doing. He said, so I really, if, if we need to reschedule the interview, I'll be glad to do that. But I'm going to be coming in jeans. Is that acceptable? I said, absolutely. And he again reminded me that when he saw me that um, he was coming from the other job site and he apologized again for his informal attire. So I think there, there are times when it can be okay, but I think you really have to set it up to be okay in order for that to work. So no flip-flops, no shorts, no baseball hats, um, that sort of thing. So you want to look business professional. And then following up, some suggestions here. First of all, when you're in the interview, ask about what the next steps are and what the time frame is so that you get kind of an idea of where we're going from here. So am I going to know in a week? Is it going to be a month? Is it going to be three months? Because any one of those time frames may be uh, what they believe is acceptable or what their normal time frame is. So ask what the time frame is, what the next steps are. Is the next step a job offer? Is it another interview? Is it a series of interviews? Are there tests? Uh, is there some sort of testing involved? Will I need to pre 
be providing references. Find out all that information before you leave so you have a really good idea. Also, you may want to set an expectation. If they say, well, gosh, we should get back to you no later than one week, then you might want to say, well, would it be acceptable if I haven't heard from you in one week to follow up? And how would you prefer I follow up? Telephone call, email, whatever. So you clear that with a person before you ever leave the interview. And so I think that's a really, really great tip because sometimes we just don't know where it's going from there and then you're just sitting there waiting and wondering and you should have an idea of what that time frame is. Um, you should always, always, always send a thank you note. And I have to say, even though in my job now I interview mainly fairly senior level professionals, it is rare for me to receive a thank you note. And it absolutely sets those individuals apart because immediately I think, wow, this is a professional. This is someone who really understands um, what it means to be a great professional, what it means to be a team worker, what it means when they say thank you for your time and, and uh, the courtesy that you extended to me. I really do appreciate that. And it will set you apart. What I did when I was interviewing, I took my uh, thank you notes and my postage stamps with me to the interview. I took extras just in case there would be an extra interviewer that I didn't know about. And before I even got in the car to drive home, well, while I was sitting in the car, I wrote my thank you notes. I had their business cards, so I had the correct spelling of their names and so forth. And I dropped them off in the mailbox on my way home. So before I was even home, I had that thank you note in the mail. Uh, you can also send uh, an email, and that's good too, um, but I, I really like the personal note, and I think that does truly set you apart. Uh, but if you can only send an email, that's good too, but it's great to follow up. And in your thank you note, you might want to say not only thank you for your time, thank you for the information you shared, thank you for the consideration you gave, but you may want to then highlight in one or two sentences what you believe your strengths were. So restate that. I believe I can make a great com contribution to your organization because of my background in A, B, and C, or because of my credentials in uh, C, D, and E, or whatever it might be. So um, have that thank you note, and it's a great not only way to set you apart, but to remind that interviewer of your great skills and attributes that you bring to the job. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, follow up, but don't be a pest. And that's, there's a fine line sometimes. Always set the expectations. When you've had that last conversation with that interviewer, or with that hiring manager, whoever it might be, um, Ask, what is the next step and when can I expect to hear from you? So if you've now, if you're, you've called, you've uh, followed up with a phone call, you've spoken with someone, they say, no, I'm sorry, no decision has been made yet, when might I expect to hear something? Well, it's probably going to be another week. Well, if I haven't heard from you in another week, would you mind if I call back at that point? They, now, they may say, no, please, don't call us back. We'll call you. But at least set that expectation so you know what they expect and what they consider professional follow-up. So let them set the tone. Let them guide you on what is the best next step. Okay, that was all of my prepared remarks. Do we have some time for a few more, a uh, few questions here? We have, okay, a few uh, minutes for questions. Yes? My problem is I can't seem to get in the door. Um, I have a lot of experience in the 50 plus age group. Mm -hmm. But um, if I can get in the door, I have a chance to interview so much better. Right. Know. 